the Pacific Battle Area. In Square Miles, the biggest single battleground of the war today. Down there, south of the Solomons, by some 900 miles, and about 1,000 miles east of Sydney, Australia, lies New Caledonia, a small, rich, tropical island just south of the equator, 248 miles long, and so narrow that from its mountain peaks, both sides of the island are clearly visible. For years, the French colonial government enjoyed New Caledonia's rich exports. Today, not Vichy France, but a United Nations ally, fighting France, is in possession of the island. And here their troops are greeting the arrival of an AEF in Nunea, the island's capital. The first American troops ever to set foot in New Caledonia. A trim fighting force of trained soldiers parading under their stars and stripes deep in the South Pacific. Native free French troops, skilled jungle scouts in French uniform, and the fighting French themselves, unlike their native country, still in uniform, and fighting shoulder to shoulder with the recently arrived Americans, to whom, today, they've turned out to pay tribute. Before the ceremonies end, the Allied troops parade together past the reviewing stand where flags of the United States and the cross of fighting France hang side by side. Then, off to work. Deep into the narrow island near the native village of La Poa, the Americans hold a motorized review of a new kind of striking force, a peep troop squadron, organized by task force commanders to answer defense problems peculiar to New Caledonia. In an island of few roads, deep jungles, and high hills, the tiny quarter-ton vehicle has repeatedly proven itself ideal for problems of quick defense and attack. Performing duties usually assigned to cavalry units, this trim and speedy unit of motorized infantry is designated to hit the enemy in whatever section of the island he may land and hold him until other troops can get there. Before their commanding officer, Lieutenant Colonel A.M. George, the troops draw up in full formation. And then the completely motorized squadron passes before him in review. Organized primarily for combat reconnaissance, the mobile peak troop squadron is equipped with most of the features of an infantry unit. Completely motorized, there's a light and heavy mortar section, machine gun section, its own reconnaissance units, and towed behind the little cars, 37 millimeter anti-tank cannons all designed to give the unit striking power as well as the speed and maneuverability provided by the peeps themselves. Skilled crews of a machine gun platoon race in a quick assembly of light 30 caliber machine guns, dismounted from the peeps and mounted onto tripods in less than 30 seconds. Daily execution of the unusual tactical problems of the peep troops trains the various sections to navigate about the island, learning to cover any section speedily. From a peep reconnaissance patrol to a command position comes the word, Jap landing in force, and the specific section of the island being theoretically invaded. The operator of the portable radio hands the message to the commander, who, Summoning a native Kanaka repeats it in French. This native soldier will serve as a guide for the peep troops through the jungle. At the same time, an aide relays the message to staff headquarters by phone, dispatching a motorcyclist to rouse the bivouacking troops. the alert and ready for action, it's no time at all before the squadron of tiny cars has emerged from its concealment in the bamboo rushes, maneuvering the rough ground with ease and sureness, and then speedily off to the mock battle area. Riding in advance, reconnaissance motorcycle scouts cross into a ravine, and sensing possible enemy crossfire, skid their bikes into a spill poking out their Tommy guns, 
and behind them a reconnaissance unit furthers the protecting action with a light 30, while above them the roaring parade of peeps passes on its way to its military destination. Arriving near the area where the enemy supposedly has made his landing, a mortar squad sets up its mortars to blast the enemy off the island. They're quick and efficient. This is training for what may come, but these are the spots where the real thing may take place any day. If and when the enemy comes, these mobile troops are going to be the first to meet and repel him. And accidents like these will put valuable men and equipment out of action. Today, it's just training for the speedy medical section, carefully practicing to lift the wounded onto their ambular peak and take them to field hospitals. Deep into the island's jungle fastness go the troops, daily familiarizing themselves more and more with the island's landmarks and learning how to get around the scant rail-like roads. Their problem is to attack the position taken by the enemy, who today is make-believe. Across the river just ahead, the enemy has taken a strong position from which he must be driven. These troops are advance guard of the island's defenses and must knock him back or hold him tight until the slower reinforcements can come up. Within range of the enemy, 37s go into action behind low-lying palms. Quick, prearranged battle formation for maximum firing power and cover until the reinforcements arrive with heavier guns and equipment. And to cover their defenses, a dense smoke screen is set up, hiding the advance. Behind them in a shallow place, a flanking movement to surprise the imaginary enemy's rear forges across the shallow island stream, meeting simulated resistance from scattered enemy fire. But on they go. Barefoot jungle scouts race across the stream with the regulars to aid them in scouting the terrain. And behind come the first reinforcements to arrive. The enemy driven back the peak troopers rush across their light machine gun squads to set up on the shore and cover the advance of the reinforcements arriving in increasing numbers. Successfully, the mythical enemy is forced back, destroyed, in action which these troops are going to perfect so that when the Jap comes, he's going to be blown right back where he came from. It's time for relaxation, and troopers in the village of La Poe are witness to an unusual scene the presentation of a handmade U.S. flag by Madame Benu, proprietress of the local hotel. <music> Lieutenant Colonel George expresses his appreciation and his friendship in the traditional French salute. The tiny native village, which the French have named St. Louis, plays host to the American soldiers in a most unusual fashion. They are dressed in their traditional Kanoka grass skirts, but some of them are adorned with undershirts donated by the soldiers. And the fast, exciting rhythms of their native dances treat the Americans to an unusual exhibition. interesting and diverting to these men, living constantly on the alert, preparing daily for the fight they're aching to get into and win. <laughs> 